So now we want to prove that uh, high connectivity implies linkedness. So Jung, in 1970, or Larman and many, on the same year, proved that uh, the following. There is a function f such that if t is fk connected, then t is k linked. <coughs> so let's prove this. We know every one connected graph is one linked, so we assume k is at least two. And we let f be the function such that it's at least two k and minimum degree f k guarantees uh, subdivision of say k sub k3 complete graph on k3 3k vertices so let's say we are given a fk connected graph <coughs> this graph has minimum degree at least fk so we can take a subgraph h which is a subdivision of k sub 3k and such fk exists from the previous theorem previous theorem implies that uh, fk equal to 2 to the 3k choose 2 is enough <coughs> and let y be the of branch vertices of H. I mean, meaning that uh, these are the vertices of degree 3. And let X be the set A1 to AK and B1 to BK. So these are distinct vertices that we want to connect. So as connectivity of G is at least 2K, I mean, the PIM theorem implies that uh, we can find the uh, 2K passes from X to Y, 2K disjoint passes. So that's exactly what we mentioned, what I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, I didn't mention it. But, uh, yeah, at the end of the last lecture, we mentioned that uh, if we have a two set, then you can find the vertex disjoint passes between them. We have no control which vertex is linked to, linked to which vertex, but we can find the, I mean, disjoint passes, which is PIM theorem. By PIM theorem, G contains 2K pairwise disjoint passes linking X to Y and having no internal vertices. in Y. So which means, I mean, X and Y. Once we have a path, I mean, we don't have to keep go to, I mean, reach another path. We just cut it and then we just take the this path. So all the internal vertices are, I mean,
not in while yep so these are like p1 p2 to p k so so there are these are the i mean collection of passes or families of passes among all such families of passes there could be more than one choice of this collection of passes and all, we consider all of them and let say let's write it bold p p a one which having the minimum number of edges outside h meaning that we have y which is a branch vertices of h and then these are the passes inside of this h which is complete graph and then if we have say x and then if we consider say this path and this path let's say this is one edge two edge path one edge path and this so one edge two three four four edge path so this uses only three edges outside of h even though it's using more edges inside here inside h but we prefer this over say i mean other passes like uh, this this only uses one two three four five edges so pure number of edges in red collection is that one two three four five six seven and here the green one is one two three four five so the number of edges used is smaller in the green one but uh, if we only count the number of edges outside of h then the red passes uses just one two three while the green one uses four and five so we choose this red collection and let pi and qi be the passes between ai and y and pi and y in this collection p respectively and let's the, let's call the end vertices of those paths as ci and di in y. Sorry, I said ci and it seems that uh, my MacBook thought that uh, I was calling Siri. <coughs> anyway, so now we want to construct the uh, AI BI passes using this. So let's consider. So we have this H and we have passes from A1, A2, A3, and P1, P2, P3, and these passes and this passes maybe it's using a bit more edges inside and those are the branch vertices c1 c2 c3 
d1, d2, d3. Since h has 3k vertices, there are k more vertices here, which are, let's say, equal y1 to yk. Let y1 to yk be the vertices in y, so those are the branch vertices of this h, not on these passes. So these passes doesn't contain any of yi because of our choice, because it has no internal vertices in y. What we want to do is we have this, I mean, blue passes and green passes, and we somehow connect them between this and this. We connect them inside of this H, and this two, we connect them inside of H, and so on. And while doing that, we want to make sure that the passes are disjoint. As this C1, C2, C3 are all branch vertices, And this H is a subdivision of complete graph. There exists a path between CI and YI, and YI and DI. So let CI and DI be the path in H. Not just path, say CI yi pass and di yi pass in h. So we have This. Maybe we can draw it slightly better. Uh, let's try this. y1, y2, y3. These are c1, c2, c3. d1, d2, d3. Good. So that's the situation. Now, we know these passes are all, all disjoint. And also, because this H is a subdivision of a complete graph, we know that this C1, C2, C3, and D1, D2, D3 are all disjoint, except uh, at the end point. Because, I mean, all this C1, C2, C3, Y1, Y2, Y3, small d1, small d2, small d3 are branch vertices. If you take the passes between them, they are all disjoint. The only possibility that uh, these passes are these entire passes. So we want to take this one path and this another path and this another path as uh, our path system. The only possibility that uh, they are disjoint is either, I mean, this blue part with uh, some, I don't know, red part or purple part, they intersect, or, I mean, this green part and some other red and purple part intersect. That's the only possibility. But the uh, green part and, I mean, green, green part and blue parts are like, I mean, equivalent. So we can just consider one case and the other cases are the same.
and there are actually some possibility that the This may be hitting H before actually go to this C1. It hits H in a non-branch vertices. So for example, it can look in this way. So it can hit actually this vertex. Because we only, I mean, ensure that the, the number of edges outside of H is minimum. So for all we know, this path could hit H at some point and then go along with use some H, I mean edges in H, and then leave again outside and then come to another part and then you go to some C1. So we don't know whether I mean it hits this part before or not. Let xi be the first vertex of ci that belong to pi. So first vertex from yi, the cross to yi, and let gi be the first vertex of di. Again, first is uh, counting from yi, so cross to yi, that belong to QI. So from here you go and then this is the first vertex that actually belong to P1. So this is X1 and let's say this looks this way then this is G1. And what we want to take is the passes using only this. We want to cut this part so that the, we actually get the pass. So we follow AI XI pass in PI, then XI YI pass in CI, YI, GI pass in DI. And GI, BI pass in QI. By the choice, this is a AI BI pass because this is the closed to YI which intersects with PI. So PI does not intersect here and QI also does not intersect here.
So now we want to show that these paths are actually disjoint. Again, the only possibility of that being not disjoint is that the, uh, I mean, some blue part and this inside part, orange part intersect, or this orange part with uh, some green part intersect. One of them must happen in order them to be not disjoint. Since the path is P, this joint, our AI PI path can intersect the path for some other index only along the xi gi path in ci union ti So now what I was thinking is what do we do if we have a situation that this path actually intersects here while this path intersects it here. In that case, we have Let's say we take the this path. So we let xi be the vertex, which is close to the y2 on this ci, which intersects with this pi. And then gi be the vertex which is close to this xi on this entire segment which is close to the xi which also intersect with this q3 qi then we get the uh, these passes so let's correct the definition in that way and again now we want to show that the uh, this inside part, I mean, so we know that this doesn't intersect the, its own index path and its own index path by the definition of this xi and gi. So it doesn't happen. So the only possibility is that uh, this part intersect with either here or here with a different index. That could still happen. But now we want to use the this choice of p to show that such case doesn't happen. So let w p such a vertex closed. to yi along ci union ti. So we have this middle part so we have this path and then say some other path So this is xi and this is gi.
and some other path pj intersects it here at w and by symmetry assume W is between xi and yi. On ci. So it's either this situation xi and gi, yi, and we have w in the case of this normal case. But uh, this special case, we could have uh, xi, gi, but still it's between yi and xi in w. And this part is ci and this part is ci in this situation. W is on internal vertex of PJ or some J which is not I. Since this YI is not reached by this P. So this P is a collection of paths which doesn't contain Y. Then we can replace the part of PJ after W with the W, Y, I, pass on C, I. So in this first case, let's say in, for, in case 1, this Y, I is not reached by P. So this P, J actually hits this y, hits W, and then it connects to, say, X, J. But after hitting this, we know that this path is already in, this path is in H. And then we have a YI here. So from here, if we just directly go to YI, and this inside part is not, it's part of H, but it's not inside of this path system P. So if we instead, take the this path with this then we don't have to use the additional edges which we used to get to xj and we know that this edge are not in h because h is a subdivision of complete graph and in here in w 
which between xi and yi. So in H, this has degree 2. H has, in W has degree 2 in H, which both edges are used, so this third edge is not in H. So instead of taking this path, this path, if we just detour to here, then we could have get a better family of paths, which uses a smaller number of edges outside of H, which is a contradiction by the choice to P. So by the choice of P, choice of W, this does not conflict with any other passes in P. However, the result is a family of x, y passes with fewer edges outside H, a contradiction to the definition of P. And in this second case, actually doesn't happen because yeah, we shouldn't really have considered this, but I was confused at the moment. So this doesn't really happen because we have this C3 and T3. The case we were thinking is when So this is x1 and this is q3. If this q3 hits c3 before between this x3 x3 and y3. If this case happens, then what you can simply do is you take the, this path, and then from here you take this path to go to y3 instead. Instead of going to d3, you change this path with this path. Then you get a better path system, p, which uses smaller number of edges outside of h, since here we don't really care which vertices are linked. This 2k vertices could be anything. So this case doesn't really happen. And also, I mean, so this Green path doesn't intersect any vertices in here, and then at the end it will come here, so we can actually take uh, some vertex which is close to y3, which is g3. So sorry for the confusion that uh, the second case actually never happened, only the first case. So this first case, if again repeat this argument, then if there is a vertex W, which belong to here, and then which also belong to uh, this path PJ. It, it is an internal vertex in PJ. Then again in PJ, you can just go along with it until W, and then you just move to YI instead of going to XJ, because both of them are branch vertices. So we might as well go to yi using less number of edges outside of h. So, t3 
this shows that if the path system P was the one with the, our minimality property, then there is no such vertex W, and we finish the construction. So this proves our theorem. So as, I mean, how large is this F is another question. And here, definitely 2 to the 3 k choose 2 suffice, but that's an exponential number, exponential in k. But if you closely see the proof, we, we use this number in obtaining this k sub k3, k sub 3k. So if we use this Komlosh Semoredi or Golosh Thomason, then we can lower it to some quadratic function. Furthermore, it's better. I mean, Bolobashi and Thomasen in 1996 proved that 22k connectedness actually imply k linkedness. And later it's further improved. By Thomas and Ulan, they improved this to 16k. And Kawarabayashi Kosochika U. I mean, improved this to 12k, and Thomas and Wulan improved this to 10k. So we know that 10k connectedness implies k linkedness. And for lower bound, Green proved that uh, this must be at least 3k minus 2 for k at least 4. So the best value of f lies between these two function, but we don't really know what's the correct number. Yeah. So this concludes the today's lecture. Yeah. Thank you for listening.